Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout, um, episode number 100. That's two right. year anniversary. That's right. We've been u doing this for two years now. Yeah. Two years. <laughs> I don't have anything special planned. I'm sorry. I, I don't know. have any cool graphics or anything. So there you go. That's it. Welcome back, guys. Um, let's start the show with coupon code. This week's coupon code is POTION. Gets you 10% off on your order. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on your order. <laughs> on your infinite order. Yeah. Um, works on everything except um, gift certificates and software. As you can get everything else like printers, filament, all of lovely boards that bring your project to life. Why is it potion this week? Yeah, it's a Pokemon potion week. <laughs> uh, we got the same deals with the UPS stuff. If you spend over $100 or more, you get free shipping yep. anywhere in the US. Uh, I think it's continental US. Yeah. $200? Mm -hmm. $200, sorry. I said $100. Okay, we still have Adafruit Daily. That's going on. And we'll start off with what are you prototyping? So, overhead. What were we prototyping last what? week? Yeah. Which is released this week. Yeah. It's the Pokemon Potion Battery Pack. Okay. So, a couple <laughs> weeks ago, Phil and I were like, all right, we got to do some Pokemon potions with all this Poke craze going on. So, uh, one of the ideas was. Everybody draining their batteries, uh, why not make some battery packs for them? So, nice simple little 3D printed design to hold our lipstick batteries. So, um, we took it up a notch and milled out some custom PCBs so you can illuminate them. So we got this going on here. Too bright. Mine blowing out the camera. But, um, very nice little glow on there. It looks a little bit hot spotty on the cameras, but in real life it looks nice and glowy. Um, features a nice little clip that you can attach to your belt or shirt You're going around and we have the um, battery pack inside here chargeable hook up your um, USB uh, through there yeah and if you guys want to kind of jump in sorry yeah, go, go. all right if you guys want to build this we got the same deal every week um, learning guide to go with the tutorial mm -hmm. if that made sense um, you can download STLs and stuff uh, Fusion files available to download and stuff. Look at it all purple and pretty. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. That looks excellent in the translucent purple PLA that we have in the shop if you don't yeah, want to right. use any of the LEDs. And some yep. people were saying in the comments for the video, um, where can I get this milled at? Uh, it's going to be quite pricey if you go to somewhere like Osh Park. So luckily, um, you don't have to have that. You can just have it printed out. But if you do oh, want sorry, the LEDs, sure that. Yeah. The first um, iteration of it had us using these simple little LEDs with the um, the battery pa uh, the coin cell battery holder that we have in the shop as well. So you could just use that. And pardon this tape. Just get rid of that. Are you still up on the uh, overhead? Yeah, so yeah, a simple so little uh, 20 millimeter uh, coin cell battery that goes inside there with an on and off switch. And if you wire up your LED, um, Parallel. legs up in parallel, you can do all of this without having to mill out a custom PCB for it. So, um, because this uh, 
was uh, laid out for the design before. Um, you know, simply just insert that like that, and you can have the exact same effect. Hey, Aiden's got a question. Is that lilac filament in the shop? No, it's not. Uh, this is some stuff that we got from Print and Z, um, yeah, which is also out. from Melt Ink. So it's the same stuff from Melt Ink, um, mm -hmm. but distributed by uh, Mr. Wayne from uh, Print and Z. Print and Z. And so it's, I like this purple. It's a lot nice. I might, we might stock it in the shop. Yeah. But like I was saying, we do have the uh, translucent purple if uh, you want to go that route. But yeah, it's a much easier way to get the same effect without having to mill out your own PCB board. Just uh, arrange your LEDs in this nice little configuration here. Yeah, since the bottom little... has these standoffs, maybe you could mm -hmm. like uh, use those to, I don't mm -hmm. know, like secure it somehow. With yeah, we do have the, something. yeah, we do have the parts if you do want to use the mounting holes for the um, coin cell battery. And you can use whatever LED. Um, we have LED sequins, which are surface mounted on the little PCB. Mm -hmm. uh, they have the resistor already on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're cool. Um, PID for this, I don't know if you have it loaded up already. Sure. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of them, so that's why I, I didn't give a specific one. So just type in um, coin cell, and you'll get all the coin cells. Some yeah, of them the, come with a switch, some of them come without a switch. Yeah, the one that um, I used was the 20 millimeter one, though. This one, nice the 20, CR2032 is yeah. the battery uh, model. So definitely check those out if you bucks. want to get the illuminated effect without having to mill out a board. And of course, if you do want to do mill you one out, Battery? Uh, no, not the 20. Oh, there's certain sizes that are rechargeable. Yeah, it'll go with that one right there. This one? Non rechargeable. Yeah, right here. This is a recharger. This is a yeah. charger for your. The 2450, okay. yeah. yeah. So if you do want to get these milled out, or if you do have access to a um, PCB miller, you can get the files off of um, the Fusion 360 files. Huh? So check those out if you no, want to I, I have the board. Eagle CAD if you want to download it. It's go. super simple. The board file, yeah. yeah. Um, and there's like a simple circuit diagram um, if you want to assemble the, the LEDs freehand, free wired, whatever it's called. Very cool. Yeah, so the whole pro the whole tutorial is there. Cool. All right. Tom Thingiverse, you can download it there. Mm, cool. So many people download it. Yay. Okay. Yeah. Other things are prototyping if you want to move along. Yeah, sure. If you have any questions about it, let us know. Uh, do you have any three files for the Pi tablet? But just without the camera parts, ports, and standoffs for them. Uh, I'm not sure which project you're talking about, the, the, the Pi tablet. Um, which uh, one is that? Don't yeah. Tra What's that? Don't train there. Don't train rail? Yeah, derail uh, there. <laughs> OK, we'll answer your question during the end of the show. Um, so if you want to pick up the stuff, Potion. Use the Kenko Potion. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. All right, what's this? Next project that we are working on is this very lovely, uh, it's going to be a yo-yo. Uh, Morgan last week showed up on the show and tell and showed this off. Um, none of us actually ha had thought about making a yo-yo with the Circuit Playground. So nice uh, use of the built-in accelerometer and the um, 10 uh, new pixels that are included in this. Um, no, you build out a very nice um, uh, window for this. So you can see through there using acrylic. And um, we ordered some bearings and some more parts to build a nice little yo-yo. Yeah, this is cool. Um, PT reached out to Morgan and um, asked if, uh, if we could make a, a learning guide because I think it's a pretty cool project. So um, I'm working with her to, uh, to make a learning guide. She wrote some documentation for it. So we'll uh, work together to make a... Uh, to make this available for you guys. Uh, she designed this in open or uh, Onshape, mm -hmm. which is a CAD ba or web based CAD software, which is pretty pretty open source and, and nice. And it's a I think I printed yeah, I printed it on my printer bot play. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just waiting on some hardware to finish the assembly of it. Um, I'm thinking to add like a skate bearing uh, to make it a little bit more what will happen there? To make it a little bit more uh, free spinning. And yeah, like Pedro said, it's a great use of the accelerometer. And uh, we'll see if we can come up with some, some cool sketches that go with this. Um, yeah, it's like a three-piece design thing. You have, you have to use two circuit playgrounds because each side has, has, will have a circuit playground. Uh, so we're just trying to sort out if we can make it thinner, how can we make it where the, where the, the on and off switch is easier to access. Yeah. 
so yeah. But um, yeah, I think it's a pretty cool project. Yeah. Lamar was saying that really she used like to it. collect yo-yos too, um, and we used to uh, yo-yo as well back in the '90s. And uh, it's nice to have a, a project like that, like a retro project. Yeah. Can you spin cool. it? Shh. The spin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna look cool. Maybe we can even have the sounds um, make a sound or something mm -hmm. when you spin it. That'd be cool. That'd be kind of neat. All right. All right. So that's uh, in the um, upcoming. Yeah. That's what we're gonna. Cue for that. Yeah. Shout out to Morgan Stewart. Um, for coming up with the project and coming on show and tell. If you folks have any projects you want to share, you can always do that. Uh, every Wednesday, 7.30 Eastern Time, you can come on and share. And another project, Aiden's in the chat room. Um, oh, I printed yeah. out Aiden's uh, adapter for the Hobby, Hobby Creek arm for our little Panavice Junior. So this is awesome. Uh, I took the design and I made a little tweak to it. I just made it so that uh, the... Um, I don't know what to call them, the tubes are longer so that I could press it more into the three tubes. Um, and the, uh, he designed it in Fusion 360 and he used um, the, what is the thing called, the coil feature to make uh, the exact thread. Yeah, it's a, what is it, a, a, an M16 thread mm -hmm. thing like that? I forget, but he's got the, the STL, or the Fusion file if you guys want to modify it yourself. I think even Kirby made one too, he made it in... Uh, and an AB, an ABS on his Taz, yeah. and it, that's definitely better than PLA because then you get that flexibility. Yeah, um, and it's a little bit more stronger. Yeah, so, so we actually printed this in nylon from a uh, new filament that's coming out. We'll talk about that more next. We week. didn't sign a contract or anything. Right? There's no NDA on it. Yeah. So um, All right, next up, uh, I also got the speed wheel here, so you can put your finger in there and like speed it up instead yeah. of having to like no twiddle the knob. And I think it was Nick Rosin who also released, there was a couple of um, Panavice uh, wow. models that were released like almost at the same time. This is one to add the flexi arms on the back here. But it didn't fit. Yeah, it didn't fit. Maybe there's different uh, arms, mm -hmm. so I don't know why. It looks like the one on Amazon, so I'll pick those up. Maybe it's just you know, a yeah. difference in the, the model or something, so I'll yeah, try those out. I, I ripped this from the Hobby Creek uh, flexi arm. It comes with two arms. Mm -hmm. And that yeah, base is like, it's bloop, pretty, it just falls right over. So, uh, yeah, it's not even heavy. Like, so this is why it's a really nice um, thing. Yeah, Aiden, I will post a remix of that uh, on your Thingiverse page. Thanks for reminding me. You do cool. that. All right, this is supposed to be for uh, the community makes, but... Uh, yeah, we're just kind of shuffling <laughs> around a bit. It's all right. All right. All right, next up. Sorry. Shop talk, or if you want to go into your CNC tutorial. Yeah, <coughs> if you're interested in seeing how I, I um, use uh, the other mill desktop CNC to um, to level out to face some material, I put a tutorial together on that. Uh, obviously, there's some easier, more efficient ways to do it. If you're if you're a woodworker, you probably have access to tools like a mechanical planer or a handheld planer. That's the the process of just flattening out your material to make it nice and flat and square. But I don't have those tools, and uh, I figured I'd use the other mill to flat out um, some material I picked up at the arts and crafts store. Yeah, yeah. since we so don't have access to um, bands or anything like that, like people were saying. Yeah, I mean, I could, yeah. have. I'm actually over the weekend, I'm going to go visit my friend Yanni, who is going to help me cut up some wood, because uh, if you've got a friend that's got some tools, why not use them? <laughs> All right, that's it for this layer by layer. I'll do um, some more tutorials, of course. Once a week, I'll try to do one. A quick uh, Kirby in the chat room is saying that uh, maybe some anti-slip uh, Ninja Flex base would be nice. Yeah, that'd be cool. I thought about that too. Yeah, that'd be good. Good project, good use of Ninja Flex. Yeah, okay. so maybe have some slots in there that you can insert the little Ninja Flex um, pieces just so you don't have to dual extrude it. It's a nice way to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, some like uh, little slots where the feet would go into for the base. That'd be nice. Oh, the nubs, yeah, to <laughs> go into the holes. Yeah, perfect. No screws required. <clears throat> All right, next up, we got some shop talk coming up. Yeah. Hey, guys, we got some new desks. Check Yay. it out. I got time out to put it together. So we've been using a dinner table for, <laughs> for our desk. Yeah, uh, which is not cool. for this. This desk is a gladiator desk, and we figured we'd get two more of those and then put sandwich them together so that we have this uh, nice stand-up desk where we can either stand up or use our drafting chair. Um, so there it is. Check it out. It looks good. I yeah, like def it. Definitely recommended if uh, you want a nice standing desk. Um, 
We just got two of them so we could stick them together, have the wires go through the middle of that so we don't have them uh, as we had them before, like going over the sides and yeah. you know, taking up room. I really like where the other mill is now because it's, uh, it's not shoved in the corner now. I have more access to it. I can get more different shots and angles. And um, it's on Amazon, right? You got it on Amazon? Yeah, I kept looking over like at um, Lowe's and Home Depot. None of them haven't had them in stock. The quickest that they could get them was like a month away. Uh, this was like nine hours later after I ordered it, it showed up. Amazon Prime mm -hmm. for the win? Yeah. Good show. So it's, uh, if you are in the, uh, in the market for a new desk, hey, we recommend this one. Oh, with, with shipping and everything, it's like uh, 190 You could like stand a, on it. It like, it like holds, it holds a, a lot, a yeah. ton or so. So I think check those out if you're looking for a work desk. Um, they also have like um, they have different sizes and different different uh, sizes, different wood. models where you can have them uh, just the height. Um, this is just a simple one that's uh, what is it, 39 inches high, which is uh, pretty good. 66 standing up. Six inches wide. Yeah, that's the, the width. All right. And the, um, all the, the specs are on there if you want. Guys, want to check that out? Yeah, I'll have the link in the description after the show. All right, moving on. I'm still milling stiff. I milled out a. Um, an Adafruit keychain out mm -hmm. of uh, aluminum. This is a uh, 0.125 inch thick aluminum, which is kind of thick. Um, I got, just to test out my new drill bits that I got, not drill bits, sorry, flat end mills. Uh, this is a 1 16th inch end mill, which is a nice size in between the eighth inch and the 132 inch. Uh, so this is, uh, yeah, so this is um, designed in Fusion 360 using their uh, cam tools. And I ended up doing six different G-codes for this. So the first one uh, does a facing where it will, well, it's a pocket actually, where it does like a concentric uh, pattern to level out the material. So I'm using the 1 16th inch to do that. And the second G-code uh, does the hole. So I'm just doing a little pocket of the, hole, the keychain hole where I can put it into a key ring. I think that's what they call it, yeah, key rings. So uh, the this, this whole process took, I think, about half of an hour, half an hour, something like that. And I'm doing a step down of 0.1 millimeters just to be very conservative and less aggressive on my tool bed. This, the third G-code uh, uses, I switched the tool out for a 132 inch flatten mill. And this one just sort of uh, touches up those corners because they're supposed to be pretty sharp corners in between the little petals of the Adafruit logo. So that's what I'm using. So it's just kind of um, chiseling out those details in those little nooks, or maybe they're crannies. I don't know. Zip, 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 zip. <laughs> Come on. Okay, the next one is the same tool, 132 inch flat end mill, but this one's doing the seeds, I guess, they're like the little seeds. And this is just uh, a pocket as well, and it's grinding down. All of the all of the step downs for each G code is uh, 0.1 millimeters. So this one has what five seeds or whatever. So it just ramps down and cuts the little seed out. Drip, 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 drip. <laughs> uh, there we go. Okay, and the the what is the fourth one? Yeah, the fourth. Maybe fifth, I, oh, I already lost count. Uh, this is just doing a contour using the 1 8 inch flat end mill, which is the biggest, the thickest one I have so far, the thickest tool. Yeah, it just does a, a straight up path and cuts the thing out. And it's secured to the bed, to the spoiled board using um, Nito, Nito tape. I don't know how to pronounce it. Nito tape, N-I-T-T-O tape. Um, so that just, again, is the same pass, uh, 1.1 millimeters deep. Yeah, and that's just cutting away. Chop, chop, zip, zip. All right, and the last one, this is the sixth G code. <laughs> this one's doing a chamfer using the 80 degree engraving tool. So, you know, it just uh, does a nice chamfer so that the edges aren't so sharp. And it's pretty quick. It just does one pass, one for the inner key ring. So it's a little bit easier to insert that key ring. And then one on the outer edge. And uh, it's slowed it down a bit. This one has like 500 millimeters a minute. So it's, it's, it's definitely slower, but I think the slower you go, especially with, um, with metal, soft metals, um, you get a cleaner edge. So you, yeah. you get that less chisel look to it. So you get a nice clean edge. 
Let me try it a little bit more fast before, but it did break. So we're trying to be conservative. Oh no, here. it didn't break. It just has that chisel look. Oh, when I did yeah. the Star Trek Com badge, yeah, it was like <laughs> I was like, oh my god, it's gonna break. But no, it didn't break the bit. It's a really strong bit. Cool. And uh, there was a little bit of problems with trying to um, uh, bevel out the the small logo there. Yeah, it was too tight. So I just kept it, it, Fusion just kept throwing out errors, saying the toolpath wasn't. Uh, kosher yeah so there we're looking at tumbling so we can get rid of the um, yeah I saw uh, Calvin uh, crazy white mechanist on Instagram post uh, he uh, he machined his own parts his extruder parts for his uh, thingomatic excuse me and I, I gave me the uh, inspiration that hey maybe I can tumble this and get rid of those concentric pa uh, lines and on the facing so that is definitely worth looking into uh, Calvin, if you have any tips, let me know, man. Um, I'll reach out to you, too. So there you go. That was uh, a quick uh, little project, uh, milling out this guy here. Yeah, so the one that you did before was an acrylic. Oh, man. Broke, yeah, so <laughs> that's right. This one's going to uh, be a little bit more tougher. That was huh. one of my first uh, projects. Oh, I can't get it to uh, move it down a little bit. Can't get it. It's really <laughs> strong. It's not going to break, so... Um, that sucks, I can't get it to focus. Oh wait, there it goes. So, uh, it's sort of an easy project to, to do, uh, to test out um, different feeds and speeds in your tools. I can't get it to go, sorry. <coughs> sorry guys, <laughs> you saw it in the video, it looks pretty clean. All right, Pedro's answering stuff, cool. Thank you, Pedro. All right, next up we had a little um, Print off. I'm gonna say between. Yeah, we're testing metallic. Speaking of metal, we're we're testing out metallic uh, composite materials. So last week we shared that we got a new spool to test out. This is from Colorfab. Um, it's not out yet, but uh, we got our hands on some, and we're testing it out, doing different prints and stuff, steel fill. Mm -hmm. And let's go over the overhead. Yeah, we talked about it last week how they Ooh. recommend using a stainless steel uh, nozzle. It's abrasive, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's pretty yeah. abrasive. As most. Yeah, so we were testing are. it between um, protopasta steel filament and their magnetic iron, which we already have in the shop. That's right. So uh, the print um, was a little bit, the print setup was a little bit more difficult to do. We had to do some tweaks to the profile that we normally use for the metal filaments. We just had to slow it down a little bit more. And we did have a lot of... Um, what about heat? Does it need like high temperatures? Uh, it was around 220 is what I printed it at. That's not bad. And you did have a bunch of uh, retraction, like little oozing uh, going on. That's it right there. Yeah, we that printed this right live uh, last week. Uh, it was on our Type A machine. I pulled it mm -hmm. off the bed and I shared it with you guys. Hey, guess what? Pedro polished them. Tell me a little about your polishing. Yeah, uh, so we threw it into the tumbler with some steel screws, which uh, does a pretty good job. Um, and we tumbled each one for like nine hours to see what the differences uh, would be with Over them. Over 9,000 min, no. <laughs> That's crazy, nine hours for each. That's a lot of time. Yeah. So um, you can see that the shininess is pretty much the same between the iron, and the protopasta steel, and the color fab steel. This is the color fab steel right here. And um, some of the, uh, what is this? I'm sorry. This is color fab. This is color fab. Um, okay. So, like I said, there was a little bit more of a setup to figure out what the settings were for that. Okay. And you still got some um, like weird oddities in the print. Weird. Kind of see like right the artifacts there. or something. Yeah, like, like artifacts. Um, zits like or what? What are they? The zits. Um, okay. Parts Any where like it didn't print. Um, like some skipping on the um, protopasta one, though. It printed out pretty flawlessly with uh, a faster print speed um, and only, I think, uh, 200 um, for the, uh, 220 for the, uh, the heat. All right. And that extruder. The, uh, the quality looked a little bit more better on that. And the difference is, what is that it's a little bit more heavier, the color fab stuff is, than the protopasta. So they're definitely using more metal um, particles in their filament. Okay. And then the iron um, looks pretty much the same as the steel from uh, Protopasta. Yeah. It's, it's easy to print, though? Same? Just no as easy. Artifacts, yeah. no, no artifacts. No artifacts. Nice and uh, clean. No oozing. How about the speed? Just same speeds? Same speed. So there was you know, no tweaking at all for the um, regular PLA uh, printing. What's the fast speed? 
Like 60 or 90? I'm printing at uh, 60 millimeters a second. Okay, I had to lower this down to 40 millimeters okay. a second. So color fab, you have to print fab. slower, um, but still the same heat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is what it looks like before it tumbles. Yeah. And what it looks like after. It's shiny, man. Good job. So the thinking behind this was that you know, you're know you running an, Et an Etsy shop or something like that. You don't want to spend time um, polishing it by, by hand. hand. So if you throw it in a tumble, you're definitely going to maximize time. Yeah, and it's hard to get into the details. Yeah, some of the nooks and crannies in here might be a little bit difficult to get into. And um, one um, sort of Is uh, there a difference feature. in weight from the, uh, from the iron to steel? Protopasta? No, they the they're, they're, they're about the same lightness. Oh. Um, so they're definitely using a little bit less. Yeah, uh, I like uh, the weight then from then. this. You, you can totally feel it's a little bit heavier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you were looking for something that did have that heft to it for like making yeah. trophies or something like that, something going to feel more like, um, you know, high quality, more All right. uh, high quality part with the weight. So you tested the weight, you, taste, you tested the speed, print speeds, mm -hmm. how about, uh, and the polishing, how about the magne magnetism? Yeah, so you actually discovered this by accident, just playing by with accident. this. Yeah. yeah. So the steel from ColorFab is actually magnetic, which More we've magnetic. seen that, um, you know, some steels are. All of our, yeah. we have, you know, all of our appliances are stainless steel, and none of those are magnetic yeah. at all. There's so many different types of steel, some that have more iron than others, mm -hmm. some that have nickel, some that have uh, chromium, some that have yeah. magnesium. So there's a lot of different grades of steel, and um, whatever they're using, they're just using more iron. Yeah, so the whatever the um, mixture of steel that protopasta is using, it's not magnetic at all. Yeah. And the iron is magnetic, but not as magnetic as the... Color fabs. Yeah. Um, so you really you get see such a trade off. Like, I wish one was like heavy and fast and good to print. You can't get everything in one. Yeah. Huh. So you just see the strength of um, that on the uh, color fab stuff. It's a lot more magnetic. It's magnetic on the protopasta, but not as much as you can yeah. see here. It pulls away easily and it just yeah. stays on to the color That's fab right. stuff. On um, this stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty you cool. Need a little man. Bit of <laughs> that is so dope. I like it. So if you needed, you know, something that had uh, more of a magnetic uh, property. Yeah, maybe you're making a badge or something, like a com badge. Yeah. <laughs> or Look a Pokemon it, it badge is, or it Overwatch holds on badge. It very, very well. That's great. And you can rust it, right? I don't know. That's going to be the next test. For oh, me. that's yeah, the next because test. Because if it is magnetic, um, that means it might have a little bit more iron properties on that. And if you guys remember uh, when we first got the magnetic um, Check it out. Look at this. This is huge. This is our, our icosahedron, our D20, mm -hmm. um, that's printed in protopasta's iron. It's magnetic. Yeah. And we, we printed this uh, many months ago. And we, we, just left it outside we chucked and it outside and left it out to the yeah. elements. And look, this is all natural rusting. Mm -hmm. Can you go really close? What does that look like? Whoa, look at that. That's so cool. Look how, look how it handled those overhangs. You can see on the five and stuff. But unfortunately, this kind of, we just ran out of filament, right? What does the infill look like? Oh, yeah, here's the infill on that. Who printed, what printer printed? Uh, I think the Type A machine type printed a? this. Yeah. How many shells is that? It's like pretty thick, huh? Is it heavy? That's three shells. Yeah, it's pretty heavy, yeah. That's dope. <laughs> All right, you guys want to look at the uh, the website? Should we show them the, the the steel website? It's not available yet. It's gonna be available. At the end of, uh, uh, it says right hand. here, available later mm -hmm. this summer. Okie dokie. I did some searching and I see that uh, the guys at Matter Hackers uh, already have a listed price. It says it's subject to change, but that's a lot of money. 120 bucks for uh, one and a half kilogram. Yeah, but, so there's uh, definitely pros and cons with uh, both of the uh, filaments there. One has more uh, magnetic, um, I guess, like particles in it, and the other one weighs more. Mm -hmm. One is definitely going to be more expensive since you do have to import this in yeah. uh, if you get it straight from them. From the Netherlands. Um, the protopasta stuff, you have different options in terms of uh, the spool size that you want to get. Yeah, so it comes in both 285 and 175. They believe. both do. They both do. Oh, they, this one comes yeah, in? Yeah, the only difference is uh, you get okay. to choose, you know, 500 grams, uh, 2 kilos. Yeah, look at that. You can get 125 grams for 15 bucks. Yeah, it's so like you just a nice want little to test sample, it out. Yeah. And they have a really huge one, too. Mm -hmm. um, what is that? Two, 2 kilograms. 2 kilograms, yeah. Here's a half of a kilogram. 
Yeah, so we got this in the shop for um, the 30 bucks. Um, you can pick that up if you're interested in getting some of that. Yeah, use that the coupon code. Mm -hmm. um, what is it just called? But yeah, just some of the differences there. Uh, the next test that we're going to do with it is rusting both of them to see um, what the uh, different properties of each one is. I don't know what the mixture that ColorFab is using, but if it's more magnetic, um, we're thinking that it might have more iron properties in it. Cool. All right, so we resell it. And you can get your 10% off. Or get it from Protoposta, it's all good. All right, cool. cool. You know what else we got? We got coffee. Coffee's yeah, been so out for a little bit. We've been eyeing this uh, filament, using it on a lot of different projects. Um, so we'll yeah, move I got over a lot of that. It's actually what you made your future project. We showed a couple weeks back. Still working on it. We just got to um, sort of churn through all of the Pokemon projects. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so this Pokemon, man. Yeah, so this is the, MA, uh, the MIDI sequencer, the Blue Fruit MIDI sequencer that you used uh, Protopasta on to create the um, <laughs> enclosure for. Why do you compare everything to Protopasta? Well, we'll answer that later. Uh, so, yeah, this is... Um, what's cool about this is high temperature PLA. Yes, it's... Um, so it's you can... Mal uh, not malleable. Um, a male? Uh, you yeah, can put it in an heat oven, it heat it up, and then make it stronger, resistant to heat. Yeah. And then the very awesome um, Noah and Pedro radio. Nah, NPR radio. <laughs> um, this dual extrudes well. This looks Handles over hangs really, really well. Yeah. Prints easy, as easy as you can get with PLA. There's mm -hmm. no, there's no uh, extra settings you have to do, so it works really well. Yeah, and I really like this because instead of, uh, if you wanted to have like a brown um, look to it, uh, instead of using like, uh, I like the wood filaments, lot, yeah. uh, this has some translucency no, on it. Nice and strong, dude. It's nice and strong. I love it. Um, like you were saying, it works great with the uh, the conductive filament. Do you think it smells like pasta? It doesn't. It does not smell like <laughs> coffee. Pedro doesn't yeah. think it smells like coffee. It, it I doesn't. think it has a slight hint to it. Yeah, not really. Uh, a lot of people can attest to that too. It doesn't really smell like coffee. Yeah, but it makes excellent enclosures. Um, the high temperature uh, properties of it is uh, also desirable. So, yeah, um, yeah great overhangs. Really like I keep yeah. saying. Um, yeah, this is that Pi tablet. Um, what is HTPLA? High temperature PLA. Yeah. That's what it is. Um, so can, yeah, what you're saying is that you, you can, can bake, bake it, it in an oven and at 100 stronger. degrees or something. Is it 100 degrees? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Check out, I'll, I'll link down below uh, Daniel Nore, his, uh, his video on, on testing it. He printed out a coffee cup and um, he, he did one where he heat treated it and another one where he didn't heat treat it and then he put it in hot water and then tested to see which one would last mm -hmm. longer. And I think it's a pretty fair test. Uh, to really show the properties of uh, high, te high temperature um, treated uh, PLA. Pretty cool. Oh, that's what you're reading. Why is everything compared to Protoboston? <laughs> yeah, and then Kirby, because it's really good stuff. Yeah, they do they a really are, good job of they that. They are artisans of, of, yeah. of filament. They've definitely figured out um, yeah. what is like... Small team, great company. Small team, what, you know, uh, a team of, you know... Like three or four people? Yeah. I'm like, sure. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm sure that they can... Um, we're able to say this. They were working on another type of filament before we were testing. Uh, ColorFab was testing this new type of filament before, and Protopasta came out the gates with a better version of it. I'm not going to say what it is because I, oh, I don't remember. Um, it, it worked a lot better, and they were able to produce it way faster than you know a team of you know how many who knows oh, wow. how many you That's know good, hundreds man. is. And you, this little small team is able to move fast and get things done and get it agile. out the door. Yeah, nice and agile. So this is a, another project they're printed in coffee. This half anyway. This is Phil B's beautiful um, solder fan, mm -hmm. fume extractor. I think so cool. I love using this thing. Yeah. If you haven't made this project, check this out. It's I on the Adafruit it. Learning System. Every I use it every time. day. Every time I it's got a power boost solder, and yeah. a um, a, 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 a five volt fan, mm -hmm. which is uh, which is great, and it has a carbon filter, so it'll you know ex clean out the air. Good stuff, man. Happy to carry uh, like three different types, four different types of uh, uh, iron, um, conductive, and coffee. Okay, three. Yeah. So, and then from uh, Color Fab, we have the bronze, the copper. Yeah, that's right. Um, what else? Am I missing anything? Uh, glow. Wait, no. No, not anymore. We switched over, yeah. yeah. So we carry some of their metal composites. Hey, mm -hmm. co uh, we, the, we used uh, that stuff for our, our Adafruit chest set, so it, it worked really well. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. The copper fill and the bronze fill. Yep. So there's a, you know, we don't have a favorite. It's just that ones have uh, strength over the other on different types of filament. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, Kirby's also asking, is this the three millimeter version? No, we are uh, 
I think they, uh, they're, still, they're still working on the 2 285 for the steel. Um, all the protocol stuff, yeah, it's all 175. Yeah. But hey, we've gotten support um, them, you know. Like we've gotten uh, one seven five to work on the Taz. So um, if you ever want to switch Sorry, over, yeah. <laughs> it Sorry, can't man. use both. <laughs> yeah, which is you know it's a it's a good thing that being able to use both filaments. Yeah, it's a great uh, it's a great feature. Da 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 da, shop dog. That's my song for it. <laughs> da 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 da. I just made it up. Yeah. It's, uh, I was also saying that the solder fan is the most used item. I, I love the thing, that. yeah, it's such a useful thing. Over on Twitch chat, um, people are asking, do you need a special 3D printer for the metal filaments? Just, um, a, just a, a steel nozzle. Steel nozzles you definitely don't have recommend to. If, you, if you're going to print a bunch, if you're going to print, a, you know, like a, I think it's like 750 grams, um, of printing okay. steel metal, you will see wear and tear on it. It is going to open up your nozzle. Yeah. So they uh, people do sell uh, stainless steel yep. um, nozzles. I think Protopasta sells it. They do sell it. Yeah, they, <laughs> they sell it. MK, yeah. MK eights. And uh, oh, I didn't put it in the notes. Uh, we'll talk about it next week. Okay. Though. We got some new um, nozzles in for the uh, Sigma. Are they brass though. Other uh, brass. Oh. I could have gotten steel oh. though. Uh, you need to get steel. So uh, one I'll of the say we don't have any steel nozzles on yeah. any one of so our printers. So he, here's here's the reason. But though. we've printed so much copper fill and we haven't seen any degradation. What's I, the I did that? see it. I did see it on the Type A. I had oh. to order a new nozzle for that. On oh, that's the, right. Okay. On I'll the replicator too. <laughs> it's still you know. It I didn't, guess it didn't it print didn't as run. enough as because I remember we printed uh, fifty chess pieces. Mm, yeah, that was all on the Type like, A. Probably more. Maybe yeah. like a hundred chess pieces because they're all like there's legs and I then there's we the head and then there's about a base. Three spools of filament on that. That was a crazy so. project. That took like a month to do yeah. our chess set because we had to polish like hundred pieces. Fedrick is asking any cork fill PLA. So we do have a spool of that. Um, we have tried it on a couple projects. The only thing yeah. that uh, has held us back from getting it is um, it's we do a lot of enclosures yeah, yeah. with uh, standoffs. And every time we try printing, um, even you know, with 100% infill, the standoffs always break off. Yeah. So that's one of the, the things that we look at when carrying filament. Will this work with our projects? <laughs> will this work with our project? Because we're it not can, just printing it's you not know, the, a little yeah. statue or whatever. No, it'll look great with, with that stuff, but the yeah, enclosures but is something very specific where it needs to be um, pretty rigid, pretty yeah. strong, and flexible. Since we so focus on you know um, engineering projects, we need to make sure that these you know will make a good enclosure, not just uh, for aesthetics purposes, but for um, uh, rigidity pur pur purposes as well. Yeah. So yeah, standoffs on the cork fill. Just um, no matter what we try on it, whether it be you know high infill or just you know just solid infill, right they, they just they break off. And mm -hmm. this is testing it across um, several different printers as well. So it's just the property of the uh, filament. Cool. Uh, what else? Uh, have we experimented with edi the edible three D prints? Asks uh, Apple Mate. Apple Babies MC and no, um, we wouldn't because yeah. uh, I'm sure that there's a ton of contaminants. We've made inside a, of the uh, nozzles. We've made uh, chocolate molds before. That was a project oh, like yeah, two yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, we used uh, the the a PLA 3D print and then we used uh, Food Safe um, silicone mold, mm -hmm. and then that's what we used. We just let it curate and then we washed it out thoroughly and uh, filled it up with chocolate. Cool. Right. Hopefully I tweeted that. Okay, next up. Yeah, I didn't put in the the nozzles. We'll talk about that next week though. Sure. Where to get nice cheap E three D V six type nozzles because I was looking around it's like fifteen bucks for one nozzle. You know, there's places that sell it for eighty eight cents. <laughs> so we'll talk about that next week. Alright, next up is uh, I guess Q and A. Yeah, we've, we've been doing it. <laughs> oh. So, Frederick has a question. He's getting warps with his PLA prints. Is there anything you can do other than blue tape? Um, I don't have a heated bed either. Yeah, um, the so zebra plates. Uh, if you're getting warps on your print, um, it's probably you need a fan. Um, that makes a world of a difference. Fan? Um, yeah, a fan blowing on a cooler An fan. An active cooling fan? Active cooling fan is okay. definitely Yeah, what print are you using? Let us know. And I, well, I recommend if it's like coming off the bed, then you need better adhesion to the bed. Mm -hmm. You can have these glue, uh, glue stick or um, what is it, three three D lac or something? 
What is it called? I don't know. It's like spray. It's spray adhesive. Oh yeah, there's or, different, or, different names. I recommend the Print and Z Play. Wolf bite. Or even uh, Build Tack. Yeah, That's build okay tack. too. Uh, Kirby's saying uh, hairspray, Elmer's glue, like a stick of Elmer's glue. Is yeah, works good on glass. Sand. Yep. Uh, works on glass. Yep. Um, Aiden says same thing. Elmer's glue stick. Uh, we actually don't use any. Um, you know, any hairspray glue, we just use the print and Z plates. Mm -hmm. And um, almost all the printers now have glass. heated or glass. <laughs> glass is awesome. Heated glass. Uh, he's got the he he Hep Hethos 2. I have not heard of that printer. I think Tom did a review on them. Oh, I think okay. Are those like the Wanahu style printers? Wanahu. Yeah. Cool. Hopefully that helps out. Let's see. Even saying, yep, the color fab. Uh, oh, okay, so it sticks to the fill. sticks to the bed, but on fat shapes, it's uh, a bit warped. Hmm. Hmm. PIE sheets canned my life. <laughs> changed my life, yeah. No, changed my life. No, yeah, PIE sheets on the Taz. It comes mm -hmm. stock with it. Those are great too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So the Pi tablet it was orange and had two cameras. Do you have it without the cameras? Mm -hmm. What is that? Orange. I don't remember that. Sorry. If you can link link to the project video or the learn guide, um, mm -hmm. we've done so many high uh, type tablet projects. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think I did one with two cameras. Yeah, I don't have that. That would have rung a bell, but it's it's not. Yeah, I haven't done a project with two cameras. Cool. All right, Frederick. Good luck, man. Oh, have you guys ever made keycaps or mechanical keyboards? Yes, yes we, have. we have. That was one of our projects where we tested out uh, our D uh, SLA DLP 3D printer, which mm -hmm. is a resin-based 3D printer. These lasers. Um, so, Pedro, you, you did that project. Uh, it was one of the first projects. This was with the Ember 3D printer from Autodesk. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also did some uh, some FDM testing, this just to show you how vastly different um, the detail can be. Yeah, so here it is. If you want to shoot over the overhead. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. Did a nice little. So this is the caps. keyboard. Yeah. yeah. We didn't do the whole keyboard. We did a couple keycaps because. Uh, yeah, you can get these. Can be laborious as well. So here's the. Um, this is clear resin. Clear resin um, we have yeah. colored resin now, so it'd be cool to revisit this project and do. Um, some better ones. There's a there's a lot of uh, sort of um, the sizing changes when you print something. So the, the dimensional accuracy from the SLA 3D print kind of changed, right? So you have to uh, oh, I figured scale out the scale factor. Yeah, 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 I figured that out. So you have to like make it thicker than you, you in, in your CAD than it actually is. And no, it's just in the the slicer, I guess, for the amber. Is it the slicer? <clears throat> yeah. Oh. Well, it's. I wonder if the form lab. It's how it's projection. It's the projection. How that's uh, being handled. Yeah. But yeah, uh, we have done that. We have the um, the sizings for uh, Cherry MX keyboards. So if uh, you want to check that out, uh, it's on Thingiverse and uh, believe. Learning good. No, this was before Fusion, so I only have like the one, two, three D files of that on Thingiverse. Yeah. If you want to grab that, but you can't get like the projections from that uh, to bring into uh, Fusion three hundred and sixty or any you know on shape or any other uh, yeah. CAD program. But yep, you can get grab the sizes from there. Cool. Uh, let's see what else. That's a skull on it, right? Yeah, that was a skull. Yeah. Cool skull key. Is the bed warped? Oh no, he's talking to mm -hmm, Federer. Yeah. All right, um, hunting dog. He will let us know next week. Okay, yeah, cool. please do. Yes, we do have experience with PLA PHA filament. Uh, Printed slow and colder. It was advertised at two twenty two thirty. Wondering if it's normal. Yeah, it's definitely normal. Uh, actually, no. Hotter. I had to print hotter. No, I you said like yeah, two twenty two thirty. Uh, oh, he's printing at 210. Yeah, you should print a little bit hotter. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a, uh, you'll notice that when you're like purging, it's like thicker. It comes mm -hmm. out thicker. Yeah, it actually expands. It's slower. Yeah, it expands. And it's not compatible with everybody's nozzle. Yeah, so somebody reported. We stopped like, carrying it. Yeah, we're switching back over to PLA since sorry. it'll be a lot more compatible with other people's prints. It is stronger, but it's not that great at the details. Um, some of the overhangs are a little bit more goopy. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's great for like um, it's, it's, it's for like enclosures a, and like boxes and you can sand engineering it. parts, but yeah. uh, some things do need detail. Yeah, and um, 
and overhang and overhangs yeah, yeah so, so we switched over for that reason yep um all right i think that's gonna do it looking across uh twitch and youtube chat i think that's it cool um, one earlier was could you use a mill to mill a circuit board to make a mill <laughs> i said yeah, yeah you definitely could <laughs> yeah all right. Okay, well, yeah, yeah if, you have any more, a, if you have any more questions, leave them in the video below. We'll yeah. gather them up for uh, next week. Oh, wait. Crap. I almost forgot. We do have one question. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you, you follow man mutt 66 He's basically uh, saying he's got a FlashForge Creator Pro. He took a look at our 3D, uh, Simplify 3D profiles, and he's wondering... Um, he's, looking, you know, he's, looked through, he's looked through them, and there's different speeds for, for a different type of um, sub... Uh, what would you call it, like a material profile, I guess, mm -hmm. for like the main okay. profile. We do have our GitHub up where we have most of our Simplify 3D profiles up there, maybe some Cura ones too. But he's just wondering, you know, what's the difference with the, with the print speeds? And he said that he's using a 1,800 millimeters a minute, which I'm not familiar with. I would say, uh, if you haven't already, um, go ahead and change your, um, your preferences so that it's, is it that down button? I think so. Yeah, so if you go to Simplify 3D, you click on uh, General Options, and under the Preferences tab, the first thing is uh, Speed Display Units. Change that to millimeters a second, just so that uh, uh, you can get a better, you, see, you can compare them a little bit better, because uh, if you look at like um, Cura and Simplify, well, I well, say Simplify lets you change it, but Cura and I think Slicer and stuff, they, the standard seems to be millimeters a second, because millimeters a minute is a little, I'm just not used to it, so I don't know the numbers. So that's my first thing I would say. The second thing is uh, when, kind of like a general guideline uh, for when to use a little bit faster. So the rule of thumb is the more detail you have, you might want to print slower, somewhere between 40 to 60 millimeters a second. If you have something that is really simple geometry, like let's say this, um, what is this thing? Bottle. Bottle. Yeah, this tapered bottle. That's no, there's no detail there. It is just two perimeters going up straight up. So mm -hmm. that can be, and there's no overhangs on it. So that, you, want, you can print that at like 80 millimeters a second to 90 millimeters a second uh, as the default print speed. Um, and then it, it comes down to materials. Some materials have to be printed slower. Um, so, so you have Ninja Flex. That's the standard rubbery Ninja Flex with a shore hardness of 85. Is it 85? Yeah, um, and that you do need to print like at 30 millimeters a second. But if you're using Cheetah, you can print that at 60 millimeters a second because mm -hmm. it, it just has a, a harder shore thickness, yeah. short, short hardness. But if it's a simple, um, like the unicorn horns, where it's just a cylinder, yeah. you can actually go up to 90 millimeters a second on that That's and it'll right. print just fine using the regular, the more flexible Ninja Flex. Yeah. So it all depends on geometry, what you're printing. Um, and the material. The material. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I uh, think as a as a like the generic like just stick around fifty millimeters a second because then that then everything will be okay you know uh, it's kind of rare that you want to go fast unless you have something simple mm -hmm. right yep so I hope that helps what do you guys think let us know in the comments below and yeah that could be a good guide like when to print faster or slower yeah that's a good guide I like that we'll see if we can put that together. Hunting dog is saying that it's the ten inch desktop. Um, that thing? Yeah, I don't think it had two cameras, but uh, yeah, the files are on few. Did you make it in one two three D? I don't recall. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the Thingiverse page, you can probably download the STL files for it, uh, and maybe the the source one two three D X files for it. Peter doesn't remember if he made it in <laughs> in Fusion or one two three D. You want to bring it over here? Is this one up? Same. He's like looking at it going, hmm. Is this a... I made two of them. I yeah. don't know what's what. <laughs> that project's beast. Yeah, it's pretty big. This guy, I believe. Let's see. What is it? Pi 3? Pi 2? Probably yeah. Pi 2. Yeah, so I'm using a Cano on here, which... I don't think I've turned this on for a while, so... <laughs> probably going to start updating as soon as I... Uh, after it boots. Nice little laptop there. I like that sound. Boop. Yeah. Uh, I, I this thing's this a beast is, project, man. Yeah, I don't think this is the version with the camera on it, though. Um, 
Yeah, I never did one with camera on it. It looks so pretty when it loads up. Yeah, camera's a cool piece of software. Yeah. Let me grab the other one. Um, what was the question that I wanted? What about the camera? Yeah, what was your question? Sorry. Um, Hunting Dog 5. Was it, uh, did you want the files or, or? Oh, this one has the camera on it right here. So if you take off the back, you can see all of the, you got the speaker right there, the camera is right there. Yeah, this was a, a project to see, can we make like a portable desktop? And you mm -hmm. can, but you need a lot of power. Mm -hmm. you, you, uh, the, the, uh, the display kind of need, kind of wants 12 volts, mm -hmm. but our power boost can't really give you a 12 volts. It gives you five, so um, it's gonna eat up the battery in like two hours, which I guess is a common for uh, like a, a small laptop. Yeah. B9 concept LC saying, if you use make a cam, I can get a good print, but when downloaded from Thingiverse, I can never get it to scale. Hmm. hmm. What's with the, with the ring? Probably the uh, battery's low on it, is uh, what that means. Oh, this one has emulation station on it. Yeah. That's nice. It wants to make a display for laptop. Yeah. Yeah, the 10-inch uh, display is nice. Um, oh. You just want like the reference files? Oh, all you need is uh, this front part of it then. That's where all the mounting um, holes are for that. You just project all of the standoffs for that. I thought you drilled your own. No. They're all right here. No, no, no. For the to mount the screen to the enclosure, you drilled your own. No, there's little, um, itty bitty little standoffs on there. Uh, or the display, display has uh, mounting has, holes? Has these little mounting holes on them. So you can uh, just project the standoffs from that to create the geometry you need for whatever laptop. So the tutorial, doable. he's asking where is the tutorial for that? Uh, should be just 10 inch desktop. There it is, it shows yeah. right up, just 10 inch. Sorry. Switch over. Yeah, just type in 10 inch and uh, when you're in the learn tab here of the Adafruit website. And there it is. And if the 3D files are there, yeah. Do you want to throw up the? Uh, um, the, uh, the I want to say this is probably done in uh, one, two, three D. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give them the thing. Uh, go to. Oh no! Files. Look. Oh yeah. There you go. You can edit all the files there. You can yeah, download like any step files, or you know, this will work on any um, CAD uh, package. Yeah. So you can download here. IGS, SAT, Step. They even have SketchUp if you like SketchUp, mm -hmm. OBJ. Yeah, so uh, a yeah, to just load. click on. Where was that on? Uh, Thingiverse or the um, learning yeah, guide? Yeah, it was in the learning guide. Then I clicked on STLs, and then, and then inside the Thingiverse post, that's where uh, cool. where it is. It's not loading right now, so. This is not a touch screen. Um, no, it's not. We are on the hunt for a 10-inch touch screen, but it's pretty tricky to get those at that size. Uh, but we are on the lookout for them. Yeah, 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 yeah so check it out. Um, yeah, that's you, you, the you uh, part these. you want to do. You drilled your own holes because the to figure out where exactly where the mounting holes. There's no tech drawings for it, mm, so you drilled your own right, holes. Right. But that's really cool because then you, that, that, that's, that's a really simple solution. Yeah, I like. I remember like that being a, so a, a thing cool tip. Thingy view, where this one? Yeah, and you can see right where. So you can zoom up to what I'm talking about there. So yeah, just these little um, circle. Uh, Square stand Squares, yeah. I mean, you can just project those and you'll have a rough idea of where yeah. um, all those are going to be. Yeah, and then you can get the, uh, the cutout profile mm -hmm. for, uh, for the, dis for for the, the viewing for display. The view, yeah, the for viewport. this right here, so you can get exactly where mm, the cool. cutouts are going to be for that. Yeah. So yeah, um, just grab Same. that, uh, project those objects. and yeah. um, Thing number nine. I think the seven. reason I did that was because the the holes were in different space uh, spots for um, when I made both of these I noticed that that each one had a different um, uh, position of where the uh, mounting holes for that was. Yeah. It was the easiest way to do it because yeah. and we I do thought, switch suppliers. Yeah, I was gonna and say like suppliers might have changed that on us. Yeah, it, it always changes, and this is just you know an easier way to do it. Just create your own based on what part you have. <clears throat> Uh, do you have any projects that involve Nixie tubes or vacuum tubes in general? We have a clock kit in the Adafruit yes. shop. Take um, a look at that. Um, <clears throat> is it clock? We have a lot of clock kits. Just, just go to the Adafruit site and type in the search box. Clock. Where is that? I don't... I think we, we sold out of sold it. Out yeah, because we only had a limited yeah, amount. Nobody makes it anymore. 
Yeah, I think we sold out, sorry. Just type in Nix. No more Nixie tubes. It was something that looked like Nix. It was like a... No, it was Nixie tubes. Really? Yeah, type in N-I-X. I-E. Nixie seven segment art scratch off card? Yeah. Nope, that's it. No Nixie. Sold out, but we did used to have them. Tube. I think there's even like a project page on Learn uh, showing you how to use it and if you're able to... It, yeah. Be able to get them somewhere else. Oh no, no more Nixie tubes. They're extinct. All right, well, we tried. I mean, there's a project page <laughs> to show you how to use them. So really? Okay. Should be. Cool. All right. All right that's w that, this week's Q&A. Cool, thank you guys so much for joining. Um, yeah, I want more Nixie tubes. <laughs> Thanks for, for joining, guys. We're going to, I'm going to, I got to I'm going to go out and get some cake for 100th episode. No, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm on a diet. <laughs> We're going to be at Maker Fair, so if you guys are out at Maker Fair, we'll meet up with Aiden, Kirby, if you can come out there, I'd love to see you there too, man. And yeah. anybody else? If anybody can make it out there, I would I would try to make it out there. It could be it historical out. for, for reasons yeah. uh, for seeing. Say, no, no, yeah. no, no, it's just for reasons I'm seeing. Yeah, so if you want to experience hangout. Maker Fair, definitely. Maybe we could do like a hangout. <laughs> we'll like, hang, we'll like uh, do one of those hangouts. Yeah, definitely try to make it out. Um, We'll be there. Tony will be there. Phil B will be there. Mm -hmm. The whole crew, Colin, will be there. Yep. We saw Aiden last year. We interviewed Aiden. He's out there. So make it out. We'll All right, guys. There. I gotta make some more Pokemon stuff. Hey, I was <laughs> using this as the uh, as the mouse. <laughs> that was funny. All right. Thank you guys again. We'll see you in episode 101 next week. We'll be here. Remember to stay safe. Where is that? Make a fair in New York. Yeah. And yeah, the world make a fair in New York. Hi guys. Yeah. All right, let me go back to this. Don't forget this. Support the show. Get some stiff. Put them in snow. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it. See you guys. Bye, everybody. And the music. <laughs> <laughs>